This is the first video on the topic of integration for year 13. Uh, in this video we're going to have a look at what you should already know about integration, so everything that you studied in year 12. And then we're going to have a look at what we're going to study for the rest of this topic. So in year 12 you were introduced to integration via the fundamental theorem of calculus, which states that uh, basically integration is the reverse process of differentiation. So that's how you were introduced to the topic. And then we had a look at int uh, integrating polynomials, so when you have x to the power n. So we know that when we differentiate x to the power n, we get n times x to the n minus 1. When we integrate it, we get that. We now know some other functions. Um, we know about the exponential. We know when we differentiate the exponential, we get the exponential. So therefore, when we integrate the exponential, we should get back to the exponential plus our constant c. We've seen that when we differentiate the logarithm, we get the reciprocal function, which means that when we integrate the reciprocal function, we should get the logarithm. And you'll notice I've included something called the modulus sign here. We'll cover that, why that's there um, in a couple of videos time, but we'll just leave that there for now. Uh, when we differentiate sine, we get cos, which means that when we integrate cos, we should get sine. We have seen that when we differentiate cos, we get minus sine, which means that if we were to integrate sine, we should get minus cos. Uh, we've seen that when we differentiate tan, we get sec squared. So when we integrate sec squared, we should get tan. And finally, we've seen that when we differentiate a to the power x, we get a to the power x multiplied by ln a. So when we integrate a to the power x, we should get a to the power x divided by ln a. So, these are all of the functions we've seen how to differentiate, and because we know integration is the reverse process, we now know how to integrate all of those functions as well. Um, we also saw that how you can find a function, if you're given its gradient function, and a coordinate that you can substitute in to find out your constant of integration. And we also found how to work out the area underneath a curve. So, that's everything that you should know from year 12. Um, you have the, uh, some of the formulae on your formula sheet as well, um, because uh, in the differentiation section, um, you were told that tan differentiated to give sex squared. Therefore, you know sex squared integrates to give tan. You know that sec differentiates to give sec x tan x. So therefore, you know that sec x tan x integrates to give sec x, and so on. So each of the reverse processes, you can use the differentiation part of the formula sheet to help you with integration. Just remembering that that k is there because of the chain rule. Um, so what we're going to do in the rest of this unit, this topic in year 13, well, we're going to see that as well as being the reverse process of integration, sorry, of differentiation, Integration can also be viewed as being the limit of a sum, and that then links in with working out the area underneath the curve. We're going to work out how to work, uh, find the area between curves. We're going to um, apply all of the rules that we've learned so far to solve some problems. We're going to do integration by substitution, which is basically the reverse of the chain rule. Remember that I introduced the chain rule as being differentiation by substitution. We're now going to do integration by substitution. Uh, we're going to do integration by parts, which is the reverse process of the product rule. And then we're going to find how to work out the area underneath a curve when it's expressed in, in terms of parametric equations. And then a little bit later on this year, we're going to have a look at uh, solving some differential equations. So that's everything we're going to cover in year 13.